Hi, my name is Jay and I represent BNC Contracting in Kissimmee, Florida. And we're here today to show you uh, the means of removing these gussets off of a mocked up monopole, cell phone tower monopole. When a crew goes out to these jobs and are faced with the task of removing these gussets, they, there's mechanical means and there's thermal means. And the mechanical means are, I got them lined up, they're basically a, we have a four inch grinder with a small thin blade we call a zip blade. And it will work quite well getting in on these welds to a point. Consequently, you come down to the, the uh, bolting down bolts here, and it limits your travel. And you can't, you just can't get low enough or in far enough with one of these setups. You can get part way, about a third of the way, but that's about it. The other crews will then go to a little larger wheel and might be able to get just slightly deeper but you still have the limitations of getting in around the bolt to the bottom of the gusset. So consequently then crews, we don't do it ourselves, but crews will remove the guard which will allow you to get a little bit deeper but it is not a recommended practice because it is very unsafe. The wheel could blow up and uh, cause an injury to the operator. And then there's the sawzall. The sawzall will allow you to get slightly deeper before it does bottom out on the bolts. But a sawzall is inherently slow and wears out blades very, very fast, especially in this thick material. Now an operator will in this case, go to a longer blade and be able to bend the blade in on the monopole and get down lower by keeping the, the sawzall gun out farther. But they're cutting right on the edge of the blade then and it becomes very, very dangerous because the blade will catch, it will bend and make your saw jerk and it's, it's a very difficult thing to do out at the end of the blade, although you could get clear to the bottom of this doing that technique with a lot of blades being used. The other drawback of especially the grinders using the wheels to remove this is it produces a whole bunch of dust and sparks which will coat the monopole and unless it is cleaned off immediately the moisture in the air or the first rain will cause rust on the galvanization of the monopole. Now the other means of removal of these gussets are all thermal. One is the old school tried and true oxy fuel cutting torch. This design will allow you to get clear to the bottom of the cut. You'll be able to remove this gusset all the way with an oxyacetylene torch. The drawback of using an oxyacetylene torch is it is a high heat removal process. It will, uh, depending on operator skill, it will compromise the galvanization on the back side of the monopole because of the amount of heat it puts into the material. The other drawback of the oxyacetylene torch is it produces a tremendous amount of sparks and the sparks are very high heat molten metal so they need to be contained in order to keep a fire safe job site. The third drawback of the oxyacetylene torch is it requires a tremendous amount of operator skill not to gouge the monopole itself. You have to, you have, to have a very steady hand and the operator needs to have a high amount of skill not to damage the monopole. This next process is the plasma plasma process and it is a very good removal process with a small head which will allow you to get clear down and make the cut down into the, the crotch of the material. It will remove this very well. But the drawback of the plasma process is once the material gets over five eighths of an inch thick, it becomes it, it isn't very useful because 
uh, the size of the plasma machine that's needed and uh, it, it just it slows down. It's a very slow process which produces a lot of uh, quite heavy sparks and it is a fire hazard. Also operator skill weighs into this process too. Very easy to tip the torch the wrong way and compromise the monopole itself by gouging it or the base plate. Okay, and then the last thermal process is a very old process, been around since the 40s. It's called a carbon air arc. Very simple process. Uh, there's a blast of air that comes out of this gun, and you put a carbon in there which conducts electricity. An arc is produced at the end of the carbon. The air blast blows, and it creates a little molten pool, and it just blows it away as you go. This process is a, what they consider a, a low temperature thermal removal process because of the air blast and because you're moving so fast with it. The drawback of carbon air arc is it produces a tremendous amount of sparks. It's very noisy, but it is a very, very efficient process which allows you to get into really tight spaces and with operator skill, you, you will not uh, harm the the monopole. It could be gouged, but it's a lot easier to manipulate a carbon air arc than it is a oxyacetylene torch or a plasma torch. And what we want to show you today is the conventional way of air arcing. We have found a way to do air arcing at a very very low temperature process. Now conventional carbons come in different sizes. I have a, quite a selection here. I have uh, clear from little itty bitty 16th inch carbons clear up to a 3 8 round carbon. And on the boxes of the carbons that you buy or on the internet is the recommended amperages to run these carbons. And basically today we're going to be running 5 16 carbons. I would run a 3 8 but consequently I can't fit it into my little air arc gun. But a 5 16 carbon requires 350 to 450 amps in, to run it conventionally the way most folks run a carbon air arc. 350 to 450 amps is very high heat. And because of the speed that allows you to run it, you won't put much heat into the metal itself. But still, it's a tremendous amount of amperage and energy going into the monopole. So let's get set up here to do a carbon air arc. We're going to we're going to do an example on this plate right here just so you can see the spark patterns and how much sparks it creates.